presentation today. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, okay. So this is the outline of uh, my presentation. Um, I'll look at uh, M Health in low and middle income countries. I'll examine some outliers uh, in scale and sustainment, like just looking at a few uh, M Health solutions that uh, attained scale and uh, try to ponder uh, reasons behind their success. Um, I'll take a bit of time to explore the uh, uh, WHO's uh, uh, MAPS toolkit. Uh, I'll also explore uh, the Kingdom's framework and um, uh, I'll uh, give you a few aims that I'm currently exploring um, and the methods that uh, I, I would want to pursue uh, and application of findings for the work that uh, uh, for the for the for the work that I'm doing. Uh, so um, <clears throat> M Health, which has been described as a practice of uh, uh, medicine and public health that is guided by uh, mobile devices, has the potential to enhance healthcare uh, utilization. Uh, promote affordability and uh, uh, ensure um, accountability uh, among uh, healthcare in low and middle income countries. Um, and uh, uh, recently, uh, the intersection uh, between uh, an increasingly connected world, uh, rapid technological advancements, and uh, uh, broad coverage, especially in low and middle income countries, uh, has continued to uh, uh, create uh, to strengthen the position of uh, M Health solution uh, for health MC, for health systems uh, strengthening, um, and uh, despite despite these uh, opportunities, uh, we still have uh, a, a, a long way to go. Uh, the Digital Health Atlas uh, uh, has listed uh, close to a thousand uh, digital health uh, or uh, M Health projects uh, that has uh, reached more than one bill one point five billion people. Uh, more than um, and 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 several uh, clinics and uh, health workers, uh, and uh, with 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 this uh, uh, still uh, we have uh, just a few countries uh, having uh, you know ten or more uh, digital health projects, um, and so um, then the question is uh, if we have so many uh, uh, digital health projects, then uh, what uh, what are the barriers or what makes it difficult uh, for, you know, for many countries to be aware of and to utilize some of these uh, solutions? The other way to look at that question is, uh, uh, why is it that uh, some uh, M-Health solutions uh, are more uh, are currently reporting, uh, you know, higher use cases than others? Uh, others attain scale up, others don't, others remain at pilot. Uh, and so those are some of the things that I've been uh, thinking through. And uh, uh, for sure, moving uh, M Health interventions from evidence to action uh, is uh, characterized by several challenges. Uh, just as I mentioned earlier, uh, M Health solutions are booming. I mean, like we have more than 300 applications with uh, more than uh, 200 developed each day. Uh, we have a haphazard and siloed development, adoption, and replication. So everybody's doing their thing. Uh, you know, you have duplications, you know, people are developing the application, applications that end up doing the same thing. Um, uh, most of these uh, projects are characterized by short time uh, pilots uh, that don't attain uh, long term health system uh, changes. Uh, and again, implementation and scale uh, occur in the absence of careful examination or careful evidence generation. Uh, and uh, what I'm choosing to focus on uh, among the challenges, among all the challenges that exist, uh, uh, limited uh, policy evidence on policy for uh, you know tracking the scale of these uh, interventions. So recognizing these challenges, the World Health Organization developed the M Health Assessment and Planning for Scale uh, Toolkit. And for the purpose of this presentation, I'll keep referring to this as the MAPS Toolkit. Uh, the WHO recognized that uh, there are many problems associated with moving from uh, 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 moving from uh, evidence to action, and so they tried to develop policy that would streamline this and uh, make it a predictable process uh, that is quick, uh, that is easy to understand, and that um, 
uh, is accessible to uh, especially uh, low and middle income uh, countries. Uh, the mobile, uh, uh, the, the mHealth assessment and planning for scale uh, toolkit has uh, six axes of scale. Uh, you know, uh, we have groundwork, partnerships, uh, financial health, uh, technology and architecture and operations. And if these axes of scale are harnessed properly, then uh, the end games that, uh, that, that many digital health projects would want to attain uh, that include gov government adoption or commercial adoption or hybrid a combination of both would be attained. And so uh, this toolkit essentially help, helps projects to do self-assessments and um, uh, you know, like uh, using frameworks like uh, plan, do, study, act cycles, uh, adopted frameworks that would help uh, you know, uh, innovators or uh, you, you, digital health stakeholders to know uh, at what or what what are the gaps? What are the difficulties that they are navigating, and how do they address those so that they can attain either government adoption, commercial adoption, or a hybrid? Uh, however, many projects don't attain any of these three uh, uh, end games. Many projects uh, just remain pilots or remain ideas or. Uh, you know, get funded, you try something out, and once you, you've gathered your data, you've, you have a proof of concept, nothing happens. And so uh, the MAP Toolkit is supposed to uh, help um, address that uh, problem. Uh, the, map, the MAP Toolkit has, um, you know, uh, several uh, domains uh, that, that if examined and if harnessed well, could help uh, with, uh, with 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 scale and 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 sustainment of 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 digital health uh, interventions. Um, so uh, from the time so in, so 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 from the from inception that is in 2015 when the WHO uh, 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 rolled this out, uh, we we've had uh, several use cases and it's been proven that it's uh, if if it's harnessed well. Uh, it's 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 an approach that could help uh, projects to know, for example, if it's at groundwork, uh, what are some of the things that we need to anticipate and do. If it is partnerships, what are some of the you know do, domains of partnerships that we need to explore to make sure that we know the right people, uh, we know uh, we have the right relationships. Um, if it is, uh, for example, financial health, then you begin thinking about costs and uh, you know what are the cost drivers of your interventions. How could how could costs become barriers to scale uh, of your intervention? Or if it's uh, if 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 there are tools that you that you need, then as you are developing your intervention, uh, then you can start thinking about uh, uh, some of the issues that 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 could that could come up. Then you can begin addressing them. So the M Diabetes Project in India, for example, uh, you know was. Uh, uh, guided by the uh, maps toolkit the m m hero a large texting platform uh was also you know guided by i mean looking at some of um some of those the, the, the domains that uh, that that i've mentioned and so um uh we 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 have we 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 have some digital health uh projects that uh i mean i could I could call them outliers in the sense that uh, the level of scale that they have attained um, uh, is 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 really really large. Uh, there's a platform called Devoc that is a digital infrastructure for vaccine vaccination open credentialing that has reached uh, that produce that gave two billion COVID certificates in five countries. Uh, Nick Shea is a TB platform that is uh, currently being uh, scaled up in India. Uh, has reached more than 35 million people. Uh, Comcare uh, is, is an open uh, uh, source digital health data collection system that is currently in use in 25 countries and, uh, 20, and has reached 28 million uh, patients. Uh, Rapid Pro uh, uh, has reached uh, 19,000 clinics, uh, 170,000 health workers. Then the question is, uh, and there are some solutions that has, have never been scaled up. And many solutions have much, much lower levels of scale and sustainment as compared to um, to these. Then the question is uh, why uh, why is it that some uh, digital health solutions uh, attained, or why would what 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 are some things that these solutions ended up doing that uh, other solutions uh, uh, did not uh, do? And one thing that 
is uh, consistently, one team that is consistently emerging is that most of these uh, solutions at scale, like large scale, uh, attained government adoption. And, um, and think about it, um, in many countries, the government owns more resources uh, in terms of money, technical expertise, and um, uh, 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 authority, uh, essentially resources. And so, uh, for example, if you look at uh, Nikshe, uh, Nikshe at some point was launched by the Prime Minister of India, and uh, the, the, the Prime Minister of India at that time wanted a game changer, uh, you know, something that would uh, a, a solution that would really, really uh, address uh, problems associated with TB. Um, if you look at uh, Mom Connect, uh, a large digital health uh, platform that is currently being scaled, that's currently being implemented in South Africa, and it's actually owned by the South African government. Uh, it was uh, it was piloted in a few clinics. Then um, at that time, the problem was maternal death and uh, weak infrastructure for delivering uh, maternal child services. And the government needed a game changer, and they took Mom Connect and ran with it, and it's 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 scaled uh, in the whole country. And so, uh, uh, you know, if if you look at uh, most of the, the 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 solutions that have really really attained scale, then you'll see that uh, one thing that they have in common, or one thing that sets them apart, is uh, government adoption. Then. The question is, um, how do you attain government adoption? And that's what um, that's what I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm exploring, uh, you know. Uh, and so I've I've through 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 literature review, I've seen that uh, there's a dot of evidence on how the six axes of scale, as described by the Maps Toolkit, have influenced scale and sustainment. And so it's not, uh, although you have the six axes of scale. Uh, then, then how will the six axes of scale take you to government adoption? So that uh, 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 you, you know, you, when you're done your groundwork, you've done your financial health, and you've had, you've made the right relationships, then how does that translate to government adoption? Uh, the influence of policy uh, and the political environment in the in in within the six axes has also not been adequately explored, and it, even like. Just getting to pilot your your digital health intervention, it's possible that you will not get the right uh, authorities or the right permissions or the right uh, you know so to even get started, so that you you not even have the opportunity to explore the six axes, uh, and so there's need to understand our programs um, uh, uh, how problems that is uh, the need for ML solutions, politics and policy converged to influence uh, these six axes. So. Basically, what I'm talking about is uh, uh, if, for example, you take a solution like uh, Mom Connect, uh, currently scaled up in many clinics in South Africa, or we take a solution like uh, Nikshe, a TB platform that is uh, implemented in India, then the question is how did the problem, which is TB, uh, align with the solution, which is the digital health platform, to get to that point where uh, the government is willing to budget for it and put money in it and put expertise and deploy personnel and put in everything that uh, that 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 solution would need uh, to 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 advance and uh, this is where now uh, we I, I'm, I'm, I, I propose uh, you know taking the kingdoms kingdoms uh, multiple stream uh, framework uh, that brings together uh, problems uh, policy and uh, politics uh, to converge at the policy window uh, to you know to make your solution or to make a digital health solution see light of day uh, and within the kingdoms framework we have people that have been called uh, policy entrepreneurs and you can you know you can call them knowledge brokers actors uh you, you know champions uh individuals who essentially make this uh, or catalyze the convergence of these three streams so that um, you have a problem uh, then you have uh, you have you have you have politics and you have policy and so how do you get uh, and, and most of the time you'll find like some of uh, these people are the, the, the policy entrepreneurs or uh, these catalysts or these actors uh, having the ability to you know to navigate uh, these complexities to so that you can end up having your in intervention uh, become part of a, a government um, agenda and so. Uh, I, I seek to use uh, the Kingdom's Multiple Streams Framework and the WHO uh, MAPS Toolkit to explain how certain ML interventions uh, achieved uh, scale 
Um, I also seek to apply the Kingdom's multiple framework and the MAPS toolkit to examine the role of policy entrepreneurs uh, or knowledge brokers. Uh, those are digital health actors we can use. We are, I'm trying to still, I'm still at a point of putting my language in one place uh, to look at their, their, their role in the scale and sustainment of uh, digital health um, uh, interventions. And uh, so I'm, I'm pursuing the, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a, a, a qualitative case study uh, a design approach uh and uh using uh using the maps and the uh kmsf uh, uh, uh framework um we we will conceptualize digital health scale and sustainment uh success as cases attaining any of the who maps toolkit uh end games that include uh, uh I, I talked about uh, government adoption essentially integration into public health program or commercial adoption uh like you get a solution that uh, you know, it's delivered through the private sector, or a, a philanthropist, or it's actually making its own money. It's making profits uh, that makes it uh, self-sustaining. Uh, and then a hybrid uh, that either combines two, you'll find a solution that uh, is in between government adoption and um, uh, commercial uh, adoption. And so uh, I'm, I'm looking at a qualitative case study uh, uh, where I'll do uh, uh, literature review again, guided by uh, those frameworks that I talked about. Conduct interviews with the uh, cases that are the the, suc the successful cases, uh, with an aim of just taking a deep dive and understanding how uh, you know how these three these two frameworks uh, show up in terms of uh, scale. And then, of course, while doing my uh, placement uh, experience, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, partnerships uh, or pa participant observations because, uh, like, uh, for in the summer, I'm working with the uh, village reach, and uh, I'll be nested as um, a, 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 as a, as a as a catalyst for uh, their di their digital health uh, projects uh, that are currently being scaled up in Malawi. So they're exploring how uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, these mobile health uh, projects could be scaled up in, 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 in Kenya. So uh, I'll do some, I'm looking forward to doing some participant observation there to look at how you know, politics and all of these uh, issues uh, converge to either prevent or facilitate uh, scale up. Um, I'm using, uh, uh, I'm using uh, Robert Yin's, uh, you know, a book or rather uh, you know is this is description of case study research essentially just uh, trying to see how i mean to replicate some of the work that 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 is done within my work uh and uh, 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 by case study a uh, selection criteria would look at cases that are relevant to my research question and that are able to provide rich detailed data uh, that will help answer the question that i have uh, I'm, I'm looking at cases that are broad, uh, you know, they, they, they can address, I mean, just as I said, the question that I'm looking at, and uh, cases that are located in uh, low and middle income um, countries. Um, so, uh, so currently, uh, so this is, uh, so I, I should have mentioned from the word go that this is uh, my pro works in progress for my, uh, my, my dissertation, uh, my meta project proposal. Uh, so at the moment, uh, I'm just looking at uh, uh, how policy and implementation science play out in broad, broadly. Like uh, you know, you have you have you have and 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 sustain scale and sustainment are the concepts from implementation science that uh, I'm, I'm really looking at. And within M Health, just trying to see uh, and 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 using a policy framework that is a Kingdom's framework to to try and learn and try to to take a deeper dive on on on, on some of the hypotheses that i have especially looking at um, uh, pathways to uh, government adoption um i'm hoping to gain a much more nuanced understanding of the mechanisms that drive scale and sustainment uh, of m health interventions and again sometimes like uh, 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 brian Weiner calls it the thing uh, that is like the like uh, evidence based intervention so uh, this is applicable to anything. Uh, to it, it, it could be a vaccine. It, it, it could be an M health intervention. It could be uh, a, a, a solution for preventing diabetes. Or so, 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 so the the the, the 
the the the lessons that I I I, I gleaned from the, the for, for, from 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 my inquiry could 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 help explore scale and sustainment of other EBIs that's evidence based interventions. Um, I'm also trying to examine the role, role of these actors, these catalysts, these people who make things happen, and try to see if uh, 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 I mean maybe we, we never know. Maybe this is what we need. Uh, we have epidemiologists, we have statisticians, we have uh, global health leaders, we have uh, different players within global health. But maybe it's time for us to start thinking about actors, you know, entrepreneurs, people who actually take risks, people who stick their necks out, uh, who advocate, people who go out there. And this really sits well uh, within the, uh, the, the, the leadership and uh, pro practice uh, program that, uh, that I'm currently uh, pursuing. Uh, this is uh, the, 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 this is my dissertation committee, uh, the people guiding uh, my hands. Uh, we have Brian Weiner, we have uh, Yang Fang Su, we have Mary Kay, uh, we have uh, uh, Elvin Gang from uh, Washington University in St. Louis. We have Professor Bukusi from uh, Kenya Medical Research Institute. We have uh, Thomas Odeni from um, uh, Washington uh, University in St. Louis as well. And it's a combination of policy experts, uh, implementation scientists, leaders, and uh, I just want to see uh, where this journey goes. And uh, I think I say thank you to them and to all of you for finding time to listen to me today. Thank you.